One of the cutest and fluffiest animals on the planet is the panda. They look incredibly cuddly with their thick black and white fur. However, people know relatively little about pandas other what they can see. Pandas are not only one of the world's most endangered species, but also one of its most fascinating ones. Subscribe to AWZ and let us know if you enjoy our video. Pandas are endemic to South Central China. The majority of pandas are found in the central Chinese mountain ranges of Sichuan, Gansu, Shan, and Esai. Despite the fact that most pandas have moved to higher elevation due to deforestation, they once lived in low-lying locations as well. Pandas were thought to have magical properties in ancient China. This occurred from 206 BC to 24 AD during the Han Dynasty. As a result of seeing pandas wandering around the emperor's garden, the Chinese came to believe that pandas were nearly divine beings with magical abilities. China started gifting pandas during the Tang Dynasty. Do you know about panda diplomacy? People refer to this as China's custom of giving pandas as gifts to other nations as a sign of friendliness and peace. Panda diplomacy originated in the 6th century. Pandas were frequently sent to Emperor Tenmu of Japan as diplomatic gifts by Empress Wu Zetian of the Tang Dynasty. By the 1970s, China was also donating pandas to zoos in the United States and Japan. Additionally, China would lend pandas to other nations. Several other nations started requesting pandas once China began supplying pandas to American and Japanese zoos. China, however, decided to stop giving out free pandas in 1984. This does not, however, mean that China has stopped exporting pandas. They started leasing pandas to other nations at $1 million per year, with a maximum 10-year rental period for each nation. Any pandas born during the loan period will remain China's property. Occasionally, loan pandas give birth while their agreements are still in effect. The lending country must return the panda and its cub to China in accordance with the terms they have agreed upon. China's national symbol is also the panda, in addition to the Chinese dragon. The panda has long been one of China's most enduring icons. Pandas not only served as diplomatic presents, but also figured in some of the earliest literature in China. In fact, the panda is known by 20 different names in Chinese. Examples include bamboo bear, spotted bear, bear cat, and enormous bear cat. Scientists have determined that pandas are bears amid the argument over whether they are bears or raccoons. Because of their similar appearances and behaviors, bears and raccoons are sometimes compared to pandas. For a very long time, experts argued over whether to categorize pandas as bears or raccoons. A study in 1970 provided everyone with solutions. Appendicular cellular molecules were discovered to be more similar to bears. Pandas have since been included in the Ursidae family. Giant pandas have two subspecies. These subspecies can be distinguished from giant pandas by a few specific traits. They sport various fur patterns, smaller organs, and decreased rates of reproduction. The Sichuan and Xinling pandas are these two subspecies of pandas. However, only the Qingling pandas are recognized as a subspecies of the giant panda among the two. Even though Xinling pandas were originally identified in the 1960s, they weren't officially recognized as a subspecies until 2005, making this categorization still quite recent. A baby panda is roughly the size of a stick of butter. A giant panda will grow to be between 1.2 and 1.9 meters tall and weigh between 70 and 100 kilograms as an adult. Yet, a young panda is often 900 times smaller than its mother. Despite being referred to as giant pandas, these cuddly animals begin life as little as a stick of butter and grow to an average weight of 5 ounces. 
This indicates that as babies, they only weigh between 36 and 210 grams. Panda cubs are born pink. Although it may be difficult to envision pandas without their distinctive black and white coats, these hues weren't there at birth. Only a thin coating of hair covers newborn pandas, making them primarily appear pink. However, their fur begins to grow after three weeks, and the distinctive black and white pattern can finally be seen. A mature chimney panda is light brown, and the several subspecies of white pandas all have distinctive fur hues. The Chinling panda has light brown and white fur markings. In addition to having darker fur, they differ from giant pandas in having larger molars and a smaller head. The Chinling Mountains, which reach heights of up to 3,000 meters, are home to this subspecies. Why gigantic pandas have black and white fur is unknown to science. Even after years of study, scientists are still unsure of why pandas have their unique fur patterns. Nevertheless, experts speculate that pandas most likely have black and white fur to help them blend in with rocks and snow. Pandas, in addition to possessing fluffy fur, also have robust skin. Given how fluffy they are, pandas undoubtedly have a thick covering of wool to keep them warm. However, most people are unaware that they have thick skin as well. Skin thickness varies from 5 to 10 millimeters. It is roughly twice as thick as human skin. Pandas' digestive systems resemble those of carnivores. Although this lovely mammal may be a herbivore, their stomach is actually formed like a carnivore, and pandas have shorter stomachs like carnivores. This makes it possible for them to efficiently digest the nutrients in their food. Due to their shorter guts and the fact that bamboo constitutes of 99% of a panda's diet, diet pandas do not receive as many nutrients from their diet as other animals do. Pandas have preferred varieties of bamboo. Pandas have certain sorts of bamboo that they prefer, much as humans do. Pandas particularly enjoy black bamboo, water bamboo, and arrow bamboo out of the dozens of types of bamboo. Most pandas only live up to 20 years in the wild. Pandas kept in captivity are a little shorter than this. Because captive pandas consume a diet that is far more balanced than that of wild pandas, they live an average of about 30 years. For mating, female pandas only have 24 to 72 hours. Female pandas, in contrast, have a short heat cycle of 24 to 72 hours, only go into heat every two years, and only give birth to one cub during each pregnancy. Most species can mate for months. Panda bears don't hibernate like most bears do. Pandas can't store a lot of fat because they mainly eat bamboo, therefore if the cold winter months are too severe for them to live, they will descend mountains in quest of warmer weather. The panda is a lonely animal. They typically do not reside with their family. The preference of female pandas is to live alone in their designated zone. Although male pandas are identical, during mating season they will seek out female pandas. Male pandas will abandon the female to raise their young by herself after mating. When a newborn panda gets older, it typically departs from its mother. A young panda stops relying on its mother after 9 months. However, after 18 months, when the mother becomes pregnant again, it typically moves out. There aren't many predators that attack adult pandas in the wild. However, because pandas are such delicate young animals, it is a different scenario for them. Snow leopards, black bears, eagles, wild dogs, and snow leopard cubs are all dangers to their well-being. Pandas leave odors behind to communicate with other pandas. If other pandas are nearby, they can let the panda know. This is particularly advantageous for female pandas, who draw in male pandas by releasing smells during mating season. Deforestation and industrial farming are the greatest risks to pandas. When it comes to predators, pandas have little to fear. Unfortunately, farming, deforestation, and other urban expansions have caused habitat degradation, which has significantly reduced the panda population. Giant pandas are currently categorized as vulnerable as a result. Efforts to safeguard the huge panda are still ongoing today.
Giant pandas are so much more than just adorable creatures. They are crucial to the Chinese culture as well as the ecosystem. I hope that the number of big pandas keeps increasing. But only if the ecosystems are kept secure and pristine can this occur. Do our best to preserve the environment so that these cuddly bears can live in peace and climb these trees. Let us know what you think in the comments. To ensure that you never miss a video, make sure to subscribe.